Hello, today we're going to do a panel or if you want to do a large tag you can do a large tag. I've got various items on my desk. I've got a few stamps which I'm going to use, some distress ink, um, a foam blending sponge and then some assorted bits and pieces. This is a nice piece of vellum uh, which has got a map page design on it. We've got a nice rusty star. We've got some nice green crimped um, wire. A few bits and pieces of photocopied vintage ephemera, which I had in my stash. This one actually I previously cut in half, but I think I have a plan for that. Uh, a stamped word. Some papers brown and a vintage beige coloured one. This is actually a piece of the back of an envelope, postage envelope, so the sort of thing that you would use if you want to keep anything from being bent in the postage. It's got a solid back as the big envelope. Now I've just taken away the brown paper from the front, kept that because I can recycle that into a project and then this is just the, it's a bit like grey board but it's lighter um, that I'm going to use them as my base. You can see it's got the marks on the back where I've ripped the brown paper off. Um, that, that doesn't matter, that'll get covered up. I've also got a few scraps of sort of tea stained paper, dictionary pages, more tea stained bits and pieces, music paper. But if you haven't got anything like that, you could just gesso this on both sides put distress ink on and add water so it add a, adds a bit of texture. It's entirely up to you. We could even back it with, cover it with a, just a piece of um, like scrapbook paper. I'm just going to use these and, and sort of do a bit of a patchwork onto here uh, because it just happens to be what I've got kicking around. So I'm just going to put them on with a bit of PVA glue around the edges, a little bit down the middle. I quite like that sort of distressed look to the edge, so I'm going to make sure the edge is over the edge of the piece of cardboard. I must have cut this off an A4 sheet because it's got a bit of a wavy line there, but I'll cover that up. I put that in the middle because I don't particularly want to read the writing and again because I don't particularly want to read the writing I might put that one at the corner and um, that one would fit quite nicely there it's just going to be a background so it doesn't really matter if it's particularly interesting sort of unreadable or anything like that Turn it around the right way, go up there. The edges of music papers and things quite often have a really nice sort of texture and a bit of colour to them. So if I'm doing something like this I try and keep the edges so that I don't cover them up too much. Maybe that one would be quite nice there. Because I haven't completely glued that edge down, I can lift that up. Just be careful if you're using something like dictionary pages that you don't have something showing that's uh, not appropriate. Let's put it like that. So this one will go in this corner. That one over that lap. Put a bit more glue on there. You won't particularly see any of this when the rest of the project is on the top, but it just makes it a bit more interesting. Uh, let's see. Could put that up there. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Put a bit of music paper down there. Actually, that's more interesting that way down. Or even there. Hmm. 
think I might take a little bit of that off and have it that way up. It's quite nice. As I say, if you wanted to do this just with a sheet of vintage themed scrapbook paper, you could just glue it all in one piece. Uh, that would be equally as nice because it will have interest in the background. But I'm just using what I've got sort of lying about. I'll put that bit up the top there to cover that little, that little gap there. The middle bit won't particularly show because it's going to have a, one of the bits of vintage ephemera so it doesn't particularly have to be that interesting. I've got the bits covered that I think will be showing because it will mostly be these edgy bits that, that show. Right, just move that a little bit. I'll put the lid on my glue and then it doesn't dry up. And if I want to stick any more bits down a bit more, I can do. Pop those away. So. I've got a little bit of interest, but I could do with a bit more interest in some places. This little bit's sort of a bit boring and that will show. Quite like that with the number, but it maybe could do with a bit more of something. And down this corner. So I've got this um, stamp. It's a, I think it's a stamp as anonymous one. Tim Holtz one. And again, it's just a script. So I'm just going to... Do a little bit of stamping here and there. Sort of up the top here, coming in a little bit like that. That that's a lot more interesting now. Again, down this bottom edge. And as I always say, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just going up there a little bit. Might do a little bit of that corner and I can turn it upside down and wrong way around as well so you don't always have to read everything. Yeah, a little bit just across there. Just makes it as look as if it all belongs together. there. So I've almost made a border, if you can understand what I mean by that. A little bit more across there and across the bottom. I think that's quite nice. I think I maybe could do with a little bit more stronger pattern on there um, because that is quite bold. Some of it will be covered up but it's easier to add it now than it is to try and add it when you've got other bits and pieces on. Yeah, so that knocks that back a little bit. Just a bit more up there and in the middle just for continuity. Maybe a bit up there as well. And like I always say, you can do second generation stamping. should do. That looks a little bit more as if it all belongs together. And what I might do before I go any further is also ink the edges. Add a little bit more colour to the edges. Which again frames everything. I don't put a massive amount of ink on my ink and my sponge 
I can always go back and, back and add more, but once it's on there, it's very difficult to get off. So you just build it up gradually. I tend to always shade my corners um, because it, it, it's a bit like a vignette. It brings your eye into the centre of your design. So the corners I always do a little bit more. Focus uses your eye. And that's quite nice. That's picked up a little bit of where there was one piece of paper stuck on top of the other. That's picked up a bit there. I'll do the same with some of these. So it just adds a bit more interest. Yeah, so I'm quite happy with that background. That's out of the way. Now I've got various papers and I'm going to put some on maybe in sections quite like that on there but it needs the edges distressing so that it's got a bit more texture then it just doesn't look as if it's a piece of card just plonked on. So I'm just using my scissors to distress the edges. Some people do this with an emery board. I'm never very successful with an emery board. I prefer to use my scissors. And it doesn't matter if you get any cuts that go inwards from the edges of your paper because you can make that into a feature. I've managed to not get any so far on here. gives it a bit more texture and then I can go back with this again again it gives it more texture and a bit more colour again I will go over the edges on the corners a little bit more give it a bit more colour If you want to, you can on one or two corners, I'll probably do it on this corner, you can sort of bend your corners over so you've got a little bit more sort of worn, weary, distressed look. Just be aware that is very, very white. So I tend to ink on the back first and then roll it over a little bit like that and it just looks as if it's sort of worn paper that's got a bit grungy. Might do this little corner a little bit. It's easier to ink first and then roll but I was just showing you how white it looked before you roll it. And if you, if you can't manage to roll, if your fingers are stiff and you can't manage to roll, it doesn't matter if it's just not perfect, you can always just get a pencil and get it started. By just putting it around a pencil and getting it started like that. Just makes it easier to start if you've got trouble with your fingers. So I'll curl that one a little bit, that one. That will probably go about there. So we've got a nice base. I quite like this for a little bit of stronger colour. Uh, now I don't want it the complete size so what I think I'll do I'll just put that out of the way a moment. I'm going to get a at the middle section and I'm just going to rip it against a ruler so you get a bit more fluffy edge. I'll keep this for something else, put that aside and keep it for another project and I think, let's see about there, yeah. And I'm taking it from the middle because then I can 
have the ripped edges on two edges and then I can do the other bits with my scissors. Um, you can do that bit more with your scissors. But you get a different effect with a torn edge. I won't ink this because this is quite nice just as it is with just the texture of the cardboard. See that's a completely different sort of way of distressing it to that. But it's all... Ah, now that's what I wanted. You see I've caught and ripped that. It was a mistake, but I actually like it because I, I make that more prominent and make it into a feature. So we've got our panel back. I think we're going to put that there. I quite like that fairly well down like that. Now I've got these items. Journey. This was actually one photocopied postcard and I thought I was going to use it on something else so I actually cut it off um, so that I've got the lady there and I've got the postcard there or the piece of writing on the postcard there. I've also got this one. Now I'm not sure whether I'm going to use her or the smaller one. I think possibly her. She's got a bit more about her. So I'll get rid of the small lady. She'll get used some other time. I've got these. Now these are very white. As you, as you can see, if you put that next to that, it's just too white. So I'm going to very gently with the minimum of ink on your ink pad so that it doesn't onto your sponge so it doesn't put big streaks in and I'm just going to gently colour it up with my sponge just so it makes it a little bit more vintagey colour and less white you can see that turns a lot better than that that shouts at you so quite like that she needs her in edges inked which sounds strange but she just needs to be a little bit more brown around the edges. She's not completely white, but she isn't sepia either. Um, it just needs a bit of antiquing, so she fits a bit better now. And she might go fully on that brown, she might not. That, you can use, if you've got half bits of ephemera, like this, which isn't a full postcard, if you tuck things behind, you don't notice that the other half is missing. Put her a bit further up there. I'm quite liking that placement like that. I've got another postcard here. Now you can see, if I just put it on wholesale, just as it is, it would probably be too big. So what I'm going to do, I'll get my bigger scissors. I like the stamp, I like the lovely writing, and I like this writing, but it is just just too big. So I can cut it in half. Again, I'm probably going to ink the edges and give it a bit of colour. Where shall we put it? I could put it like that, one half like that and the other half come in there. I don't know if I need that half. I could put that half up coming out. Ah, yes, that's better. Saying I was going to put my star, I'm not sure whether I'm going to put my star or not. I'm going to definitely ink those two up. And I quite like Journey, but I've got this lovely vellum which is like a map page. Now, vellum is very difficult to attach to things because you see the glue through vellum. The best way to attach it is it attach it on the back of a project so that you can put the glue on the back and you don't see it. I quite like that. 
just like that just so it's just there I'm going to just cut that little bit off there because then I can curl that round so to attach it to the back I've got this little square left and I do actually I love this so what I'm going to do is if you bend or scrunch up vellum it gets white lines in it the same with if you do the edges it makes it go white so I'm just going to just distress the edges a little bit so they are quite so square it's not the easiest thing isn't this I'll just be gentle with it and what I might do is just tuck that up there just for a bit more interest so again I've got this wire which I think is lovely curled it around in my hand whether there with the star on the top would look quite nice and then journey down there yeah I think that's quite nice so what I'll do is I'll ink these up so they aren't quite as white again because the whole thing is telling a story that she's going on a journey so I'll just remove that one I want a bit of colour as well it doesn't matter if these things are a bit patchy you don't want great streaks but little bits of sort of different colours and different shades don't matter because it just looks as if it's been chucked in a drawer or something or just quite antiquied. And I'm going a little bit off the edge of the project because it brings everything looks as if it's coming into the centre of the design. I quite like things off the edge. You could do this on a journal page without the star, obviously, because if you put it on a, in a journal, your, your journal page, your book wouldn't um, close. But if you left the star off or put something like a paper star, that would be fine. And it could be a journal page. See, I want it that way around. So I think I had it in there and I had it coming off the page a little bit that's it yeah so I think that's going to be the layout I could put I've got a little bit of this brown left I could put the journey on top of brown would be quite nice and that would tie up with that which I think I'll do so I'll, do, I'll just do the same with my ruler, try and get this to rip. It's a bit stronger, so we might have trouble. Oh, no, we've managed. Yeah, I think that'll just do it. We might have to take a little bit more off. the edges again maybe a fraction more I don't know if I'll get a fraction more off there Let's see. right now I think I'm gonna have to cut it and then scuff it that's it so that it's a bit thinner so it's got the same sort of border all the way around yeah that 
looks nice. And that will go somewhere there. Slide that down again so you can see it better about there. So what I'm going to do is start gluing things together. The video isn't too long so my battery fails. And then start building the design up. I'm going to use a combination of foam pads, heavy gel medium and just PVA. Majority of these will go on with PVA. So right, let's see. I will lift off our star. That'll go on with heavy gel medium. And I'll start at the top and work my way down gluing. So I know she'll go glue onto there. Sometimes you can just lift things up, put a bit of glue where you'll get an, you know you'll get an overlap, place, place things back down again and keep going like that because you can always add more glue in later but I've, as, I've had, as I have always explained before as well, if you leave bits of gaps you can put things in between and also you don't want everything completely pressed down and flat it's got it's got a bit more movement and a bit more texture if you've got things just glued in some areas so again this one I'm just going to lift it up slightly put some glue various bits no, that's sort of where I want that. Glue the hair down again. Now this one is vellum, so the, the vellum I need to put the glue where it's going to be behind because, as I've explained, the glue will show on the vellum. You see that? Right. Now that one, I'm just going to lift that up so I can put some glue underneath to attach that to there. So this cluster is more or less all glued together. So what I can do is I can I know where it's going more or less. I can just lift it off for a moment. That's gluing on there. Now this is my vellum. So what I could also do, I'm going to turn it over and just put my vellum just bent so that there is so much of it on the back. And I can either glue that use tape or use a stapler. If you've got a stapler that will go fairly well into your design and then you won't see it, you can do that. I actually I quite like staples, I like staples showing. So what I'll do is I'll turn it over, turn it around a little bit, make sure I'm in the right place. And then I'm going to staple it. Just in a couple of places. Like that. Now it's secure. I can add a bit of glue on there. For some reason we'd stopped recording again. It keeps doing that. I don't know why. So we've got our piece of vellum attached on with two staples but a bit of glue on the back. We're going to put her, let's see about there I think. So I will just put 
a reasonable amount of glue all the way around so she isn't going to come off or the cluster isn't going to come off just be aware some of your edges won't be attached so you don't want glue right to the very edges I want things to overlap at the corners could go a bit further up that's that still not sure about the star I quite like the star Wondering whether I should have it there and have Journey there. No, I think I like it the other way around. If I had it that way, then Journey could come over there and cover the hole in the star. Yes, I think that's it. So I will get some heavy gel medium and a spatula. And this will take a little bit of setting. The, the glue isn't instant. I quite like my... Because we've got a bit of green in the map. We've got a green, bit of green in the stamp. I, I like this wire. But sort of going in and around the star. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to twist some of the ends so that it is just not going to go anywhere. It's not going to spring out while it's setting. These little bits I can always curl round a pencil like that. So we've got a bit of a spring at the end which is a bit more movement. And yeah, so I'm going to tuck that round my star. So some of my bits are in front and some of bit, my bits are behind. Do that all the way around. So it's sort of going round the star like that. Take it off. I'll get my gel medium. And you want a reasonable amount on so that it's going to stick and I'm going to put some on the wire as well because it's got a bit of sort of dimension to it it's no good putting lots of gel medium in the middle because you won't do anything on there what you need is on the edges and the bits that are going to be touching the paper it is a bit hit and miss to set off with. Sometimes you have to add a little bit later. If you don't think it's stuck. Let's get that off the front. Alright, so. This is the hole which I'm going to cover up. So I'm going to put that. So it partly comes over the picture. It. Now, if you've got bits of gel medium that you think, oh, it's going to show, just get it off with a cotton bud. That's what I do. You can just dab it away and then it doesn't show. There are bits of this that you got, we're going to cover up anyway. I just want that to go down, so I might have just to bend it downwards a bit. We might have to put a bit of gel medium. If it's going to be troublesome, I can always cut it off later. Because we've got the gel medium, everything should stop where it's put. My last little bit is going to be my journey um, word. And I think I'm going to put that onto some foam, double-sided foam tape. Now, I'll have to be careful where I put the foam tape. Because this has got dimension, the foam tape needs to be at this end so that it'll bring this end up to be level with that. If I put the foam tape all the way along, it would make it go like that. This end would be too high. So I want it on the end here. And I'm actually going to put a double 
layer because that is quite dimensional. So I think we're going to need two lots, one on top of the other. I can see what we think. Yeah, I think that'll be about right. So I'm going to put a bit of PVA glue on my double sided tip so I've got a bit of wiggle room. I've got a bit of gel medium still on my spatula so I'll get rid of that and clean that on there. Which will make it stick to there hopefully. And as you see that hole's there, we're going to cover that up. And I'm going to go there. So that finishes the story off. Might need a little a bit of hold until it just grabs. I think that's going to be troublesome, so we might have to cut that one bit of wire off, but we'll see. So that is basically our our journey and our uh, you could do it as a scrapbook page, you could do it as a large tag. You, if you use the other lady, the other photograph that I um, put away, that I'd cut off, you could do a smaller tag using her, um, or you could do it as a journal page, as I say, um, but without the star and as much dimension, and then your page would still close. Hope you like that.